Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for joining us once again for the Church at Visalia, the Church Online. Really excited about what we're going to talk about today because today we're talking about one of my favorite Bible stories of all time. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 4. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and get your Bible out and we're going to get right to work. Here we go. It says, The wife of a man of the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all except a little oil. And Elisha said, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards she shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all of the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live off of what's left. Man, what an amazing story. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this amazing story found in 2 Kings chapter 4 of a widow who lived thousands of years ago who's going to teach us a little bit more about you and about ourselves today. Bless our time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is an interesting story. Interesting story. As, as, here's the thing. When you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, you can see yourself in some of the characters. And you can see yourself in the narrative of what's going on. And also when you read the Bible, you're, you're, it, it's so inspirational, but it's also so practical. And this, this story shows us some practical things of how we can live our life. So today I want to point out just three things from this story that I think we can glean from and apply. Here's the first one. Tough times come even to those who walk with the Lord. This passage says that the wife of a man of the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. This lady was going through a tough time. Her husband was a godly man. Her husband was in the company of the prophets. She was a godly woman. She's married to a man who's pursuing the things of God. She lost her husband too early, obviously, because he still has two, two boys left at the house. So this is a godly man who died young and a godly woman who lost her husband, doesn't have the money to take care of herself and her family, is getting ready to lose her two kids. She's going through a tough time. And she was godly. She was good. She was doing everything that she knew to do, and it just wasn't enough. And here's the thing I think that we've got to understand in our life. Listen, tough times come even to those who are godly. Tough times come even to those who are pursuing Jesus. Tough times come. It's life. People die young. Sickness comes upon us. Money is tight. And just because you ask Jesus in your heart doesn't mean that the, the trials and tribulations of life go away. In fact, Jesus said, Jesus said that in this world you'll have many trials, but don't, but don't worry, I've overcome the world. So the first thing I want to point out here that we see in this passage is, is tough times come even to those that are walking with God. And you might be walking with God and going through a tough time. I'm not, I'm not making light of it. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. I'm not saying it's not, not nothing. It's just that this, this is life. Tough times come. The second thing that we see in this, which is really, really, to me anyway, super interesting is, is that God uses what you have. When you need a miracle, when you need God to supply your needs, God uses what you have. The prophet comes to the lady, the lady comes to the prophet and the prophet says to her, what do you have in your house? And she says, I don't have anything. Well, except this jar of oil. And that was enough. That, that was enough. That's all God needed. All God needed was to see that she was willing to take something that she had and sow it. She was willing to take something she had and use it. And she, God took the very little that she had and he expanded it into something really huge. And here's the thing. You might be going through a situation in your life right now where you need God to move. What is it that you have? What is it that you have? I don't have anything. Listen, do you have time? Do you have any sort of a talent? Do you have any sort of treasure, time, talent, and treasure? My guess is you, you have some money. My guess is you have some time. My guess is you have a few things that you can do. 
What is a skill set that you have? What is a person that you know? What, what, what is it that you have? And what God wants to see is that we are willing to take what we have and sow it into the need that we have from him. And I, I, I think this is so practical. It's, it's, it's practical in when it comes to finances. It's practice, practical when it comes to relationships. It's practical when it comes in every area of our life. Is that God uses what we have. So let me ask you this again. What is it that you need? Okay. What is it that you have? What is it that you have? And are you willing to use that in some way so that God can move in your life in a big way? Here's the third, the third thing that we see is that we have to be willing to put in the time. This woman needed a miracle. She had a jar of oil. What did the prophet tell her to do? Go to your friends and get as many jars as you possibly can. You don't have to spend money. You don't have to spend it. You have to spend your time. Go to as many friends as you can. Get as many jars as you can. And if you notice, the miracle that she received was in direct proportion to the amount of jars that she got. She had this small, tiny thing of oil, and she had, let's say, 10 jars. 10 of those jars were full, and the oil was still coming until there was no more jars. Once there was no more jars, the oil stopped. God's abundance in her life, God's flowing in her life was not determined by what God had. God has a li limitless supply. It was determined by the amount of jars that she took the time to get. So if there's something that you're needing from God, you need to put in the time. Take what you have, take what you have, and then put in the time. That could be that could be if you need money, that could be getting an extra job. Uh, if, it, 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 if you have a relationship that's, that's, that's busted and broken, that could be spending time in prayer. W what is it that you need? And whatever it is that you need, you're going to have to spend your time investing in it. You're going to have to use what you already have. Because tough times come to even those who walk with God. And listen, I love this passage. I love this story. There's so many, there's so many angles with this thing when it comes to leadership, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to life. But the, as I was praying about and thinking about what to talk with you about today, this passage came to my mind. Second Kings chapter four. And in it, we see three things. Tough times come even to those that are walking with God. We also see that God is going to use what you already have. And the third thing that we see is that you and I are going to have to put in the time. God just doesn't send checks from heaven. God just doesn't rain down, you know, all these blessings. No, no, there's, there's this thing called seed time and harvest. We, we sow our time. We sow our talent. We sow our treasure. We sow our creative ideas. We sow in, in prayer. We sow. And when we sow, now we reap. We have to put in the time. So I hope this has helped you today. I want to I want to throw out I want to throw out a few questions for you. Number one is what is the issue that you're going through right now? Be open about it. Think about it. Talk about it amongst yourself. What is an issue that you're going through right now? Number two, what is it that you have? What is it that you have that could actually help that issue in some way? And then number three, what are your jars? What, what, what part can you play? What part can you play? Is it praying? Is it, is it going for a coffee? Is it doing an extra job? What, what, what part can you play to get God's abundance? Because God's abundance to your life, God fixing this issue is not determined. It, 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 it's not determined by God's level of what he wants to do. He wants to move in your life. It's going to be determined by how many jars you set out. It's going to be determined by what you do, what you sow. So take some time, chat about that, and we'll talk to you next time. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.